I'd buy the S&P in a second. The best single thing you could have done was just buy an index fund. What's up you guys? Welcome back to the channel. Average Joe on Money here. In this video, we're talking about S&P 500 index funds. More specifically, we're talking about Vanguard's VFIAX S&P 500 index fund versus Fidelity's FXAIX. Who wins the battle of the low cost S&P 500 index fund? Vanguard or Fidelity. Make sure to stick around all the way to the end of the video because I'm gonna break down for you what an S&P 500 index fund is, why you should choose an index fund over individual companies for your investments. We're gonna break down the differences between Vanguard's VFIAX and Fidelity's FXAIX funds which track the S&P 500. And based on those differences, we're gonna see who comes out ahead. Hey, so I put like a ton of research into these two index funds, wanted to see what the differences were and I wanted to get as much information for you as possible including Look at the funds prospectuses and all of the annual reports. All that to say, all I ask from you in return for all of that research that I put into this video is hit the like button below and then well, let's get started on the video. If you already know what an S&P 500 index fund is and why you should choose an index fund over individual companies, then jump right over to the timestamp right over there to get down to the breakdown between the two specific funds. Okay, so what exactly is an S&P 500 index fund. An index fund is a huge collection of different investments into many different companies that are in an index. For example, the S&P 500 is an index of the 500 largest U.S companies based on how valuable they are or their market capitalization. This is a market cap weighted index, meaning that the companies that have more value have more weight in the index. Companies like Amazon or Apple or Google are going to have a larger weighting than some of the smaller companies in the index. So sure, you could invest in individual companies like Amazon or Google or Apple or any of those large companies and you could invest in just those individual companies and maybe come out way ahead if those companies do well. But what happens if you invest in some companies that don't work out so well? There are a lot of companies that don't even exist anymore that some people thought were gonna be huge one day. When you invest in individual companies, that's the risk that you take. As opposed to investing in an index fund where you can invest in all of the winners, and yes, some of the losers, but you are diversified, meaning you have investments in many different companies. So that if some companies don't work out, well, that's okay. Your investments are spread out, but you also get to participate in all the winning companies as well. So like I said, an S&P 500 index fund is an investment that tracks all 500 companies in the index. Meaning that when you buy one share of a mutual fund, or an exchange traded fund that tracks the S&P 500, you are investing in every single one of the companies in the index. That's what I call diversification. So why would you choose an S&P 500 index fund over investing into individual companies? Well, diversification is very simple. You buy one share or of that mutual fund or exchange traded fund and you immediately become invested in all 500 companies in the index. If you wanted to do that organically, well, you could surely go out and buy one share of each of the 500 companies, but guess what? That would cost you about $71,000. Or you can invest $298 into a Vanguard fund or $112 into a Fidelity fund, and you can have immediate diversification amongst all 500 companies. You make the choice. You also might be thinking, well, if I Invested in an index fund, such as an S&P 500 index fund, am I really going to come out ahead? Am I gonna win over the long term with my money? Am I gonna be able to retire with this type of investment? Well, let's take a look at what billionaire investor Warren Buffett had to say on the issue. If I had a choice today for a 10-year purchase of a 10-year bond at whatever it is, or 10 years, or, or buying the S&P 500 and holding it for 10 years, I'd, I'd buy the S&P in a second. We've had world wars, we had 9-11, we had the Cuban Missile Crisis, we have, a, we have all kinds of things. The best single thing you could have done on March 11th, 1942, when I bought my first stock, was just buy an index fund and, 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 and never look at a headline, never think about stocks anymore. If you'd put $10,000 in an index fund that reinvested dividends, and it would come to $51 million now. And Warren Buffett isn't even messing around either. He put his money where his mouth is. Back in the year 2007, Warren Buffett made a 10-year, $1 million bet against a number of hedge fund companies and said, hey, let's see who's gonna come out ahead over the next 10 years. I'm gonna choose an index fund, and you can choose any number of hedge funds that you wish. And guess what? 10 years later, 
Warren Buffett won. The Vanguard S&P 500 index fund that Warren Buffett chose performed much better than the hedge funds. It returned 7.7% over those 10 years, each and every year on average, whereas the hedge funds only delivered 2.2% each year on average. So can you win with index funds? Yes, you can. In this specific video, we're talking about mutual funds, but you can also invest in an exchange traded fund. ETF trades kind of like a stock. You can purchase shares of that stock anytime throughout the trading day, and the price you pay is the price you're willing to pay, not necessarily how much the underlying value of the company is. A mutual fund, on the other hand, is based on the net asset value or the NAV of the underlying mutual fund. You can purchase a mutual fund at 9 a.m. or 10 a.m. or 2 p.m. during the trading day, but the price you get is going to be the price that is calculated at the end of the trading day once the net asset value has been calculated. Okay, so like I said, in this video we're talking Vanguard VFIAX versus Fidelity's FXAIX. Which S&P 500 index fund comes out ahead? Let's break down each individual fund. Both of these index funds have low expense ratios, which is why S&P 500 index funds are such a great investment. With Vanguard, we have an expense ratio of 0.04%, and with Fidelity, we have an expense ratio of 0.015%. So Fidelity is definitely a cheaper index fund to own. However, they're very close together, actually, and they're both very low expense ratios. Both of these index funds have an established trading history. Vanguard was created nearly 20 years ago, and Fidelity over 30 years ago. Both of these index funds have a long sustained history of generating returns for their investors. One of the cons with Vanguard is they do have a minimum required investment to start with their index funds of $3,000. Now you can opt for the exchange traded fund for Vanguard, which is V. OO instead, but if you're going to go with the mutual funds, they do have a minimum required investment of $3,000, and with Fidelity, they have no minimum requirements. You could start with like one penny or like two pennies. Okay, so how do the market returns stack up for both of these index funds compared to the actual S&P 500 index? Well, looking at here, the index performed at 4.25 and both companies tracked very closely. Same with the three year, the five year, and the 10 year. It uh, looks like Fidelity had a, was a slightly bit closer to the actual index than Vanguard, but essentially for all intents and purposes, they both tracked very closely to the actual index. And as you can see, over the past th one, three, five, and 10 years, they both performed very well. When we think about the S&P 500 index, it is a bet on American business, the 500 largest companies in our country. And that has a, been a very strong bet historically over the past one, three, five, 10 years, but also 25 years, 50 years, almost 100 years now, it's a strong bet. As you can see here, as of 12, 26 of 2019, share price for Vanguard is 298 and 93 cents, and for Fidelity, $112.32. Here is a screenshot of the composition of both Fidelity and Vanguard's index funds and what types of sectors are built into the S&P 500 index fund on both funds. As you can see, they very closely track together as well as track very closely to the S&P 500 index and the actual companies in the index. As you can see here, these two index funds are very closely correlated with each other. They both track very closely with the S&P 500 index, but if we're looking at the small details, which you essentially have to do with these two, we see here that with Fidelity, they have the lower expense ratio. Not by a bunch, the difference is negligible, but technically, Fidelity has a lower expense ratio. Fidelity also has no required minimums at all, whereas Vanguard has a minimum investment for, as an initial investment of $3,000. From a return perspective, they're both very closely correlated with the index, and Fidelity's share price at this time is significantly lower, so it's an easier price to get into for the average Joe investor. If you had to make a distinct choice between the two, you have to go with Fidelity based on these details. But ultimately, the best choice you have to make, the one you need to make, is the actual choice to start investing as the average Joe in an S&P 500 index fund today. I've laid out a case for you as to why S&P 500 index funds, or really any index fund in general, is going to be a better diversification for your portfolio than individual investment choices. I've also shown you that investing in the index over time, over the long term, is going to benefit you as the average Joe investor. So the choice you have to make is right now whether you choose Vanguard's VFIAX or Fidelity's FXAIX, doesn't matter to me. Pick one, start investing consistently for your future. If you haven't done yet, 
So press that finger on the like button really quick for me and make sure you hit that subscribe button and then click on the bell if you are not a member currently of the community to join the Average Joe Money community. We talk about all things personal finance that affect people like you and me, the Average Joe. That's debt, that's paying off debt, that's how to utilize credit cards safely, that is how to invest for your future, it's how to budget, it's all those things that affect people like you and me, the Average Joe. Interested in more investing videos from me? Well, then. Click on these videos right over there. I put out videos every week so make sure you stick around and I'll catch you in the next video.